Hello, good morning and uh, praise the Lord. This is a new day that the Lord has made. Uh, may you be blessed, may you be encouraged, and uh, may you not miss your time of visitation. The Lord is moving powerfully over our nation. May we not miss it, um, uh, the experience, that's what I mean. May we not miss it and uh, miss to see what God is doing because of being caught up in the tides of the earth. This morning I feel the Lord asking me to remind his church that um, elections are just an earthly thing mm -hmm. and there is eternity. Mm -hmm. Wow, God bless you. Wow, God bless you. A lot and watching. Amen. So the Lord is reminding his church that elections are just an earthly thing. The Lord is also reminding the church that it was not his desire for uh, people to have kings. It was the desire of human beings. Let us not get caught up in these earthly things, getting all emotional and sinning over something that the Lord never even condoned in the first place. The other thing that the Lord is saying that we need to remember is that we are Christians before we are a tribe. The Lord is reminding us about how the issue of tribe and uh, different tribes came up. It came as a result of men planning to build up a tower saying that they will go up into heaven and become gods, and so that uh, became the Tower of Babel. So that's how the issue of tribalism came. Let's not get caught up. Let's also remember that it's not a thing that the Lord likes, and therefore we can arise against it as well and speak confusion and declare unity uh, right back so we have authority. What are we dealing with at the moment um, as a church? The church currently is being tested. One, we are catching up, very, very quickly catching up. Um, you know, it's a, an SOS kind of approach, not the SOS that we know. I have a different kind of SOS that I call Saidia or Saidia, where we've realized, oh my goodness, something happened. We slept, we got caught up, and the enemy is threatening to take our nation. And all of a sudden, we ran to the Lord. The beauty with God is, if you look at the Nineveh situation, just one day of prayer and fasting, even the animals not eating a thing, the Lord looked out upon Nineveh with mercy, and the Lord has looked upon Kenya with mercy. So we are encouraged because we know who we are and we know whose we are. However, I was up um, quite a bit um, of the night, and my husband and I were agonizing about what has become of the Church of Jesus Christ. We were talking about various things, and... Um, men of God that uh, somehow I've gotten to find out um, have just been drinking very openly. You find intercessors who've been praying for the land, old people who prayed for the land, and the Lord just leads them to this place where they find these people. So as an intercessor, we share these things and find information. So this is not uh, hearsay, it's, it's, it's factual information. Men with very big churches drinking and giving themselves to drunkenness. Men with very big churches slaughtering um, animals at their churches every Sunday with the congregation agreeing to it and not wondering why the person, even though they can afford to bring um, slaughtered animals already, insists that they must slaughter and the blood be poured. Funny cultish things that are happening in the nation with mega big, big churches and people taking it as though it is okay. So what have we done? We are calling people mama, pastor, baba, or whatever it is, papa, or whatever it is. We are calling them great and mighty woman of God. I tell you the number of inboxes I've gotten calling me a mighty prophet. I have looked and I've just wondered. And if you've sent me such a message, you will find that my response is pretty quiet and still. Because I do not encourage people to begin to exalt people. I mean, some of some of you have known me a day and you're already calling me mighty prophet. You've not even tested the prophecy. And you're already so moved by the, the gift that you don't see the giver. You see the one who is the messenger. We've got to stop. We need to go back to our first love. We need to stop exalting men. And the church of Jesus Christ needs to return back to holiness. We were up um, discussing and grieving really over the issue of how people cannot take prophecy seriously because of the number of false prophecies that have come through. We're up grieving about how the Lord revealed, I got a call 
with someone shaking on the day that the prophecy about who's going to be president came through. And they said, woman of God, I am I'm, I'm shaking. And she said, the reason why I'm shaking is because of the part where you said that we let down the president and the deputy president when they knelt and cried before God and God had worked on them. And all we had to do as a church was to guide them from there to build a Kenya that would please God. And the reason I'm shaking is because you said that a number of people ask for favors. And it's important that I say this and I'll not say who and do not list in the comments if you know which church because we are not here to shame anybody. This is a message of the Lord saying repent or judgment is coming to the house of the Lord. A message specifically to the priesthood and the children of God. And the person went on to tell me about how a church got a hundred million shillings and the entire church was told to stand up and receive it when they got it from a major politician who again I'll not name because I don't want to bring any shame to anybody. And the person told me how they sat down in the congregation and they were weeping because the Lord told them this is tainted money. And she was shaking because she's never understood why she's the only one who seemed to have a problem with it. Well, I was like, you know what, this is probably gossip because I couldn't believe it. I called somebody who I know fellowships there and the person, before I even said the amount, the person confirmed the exact amount and the person went on to tell me about the meal that they went on to have afterwards. When you receive money and then go on to have a meal, even without receiving money, the meal is actually a covenant. But if I'm given several hundred millions as a priest of God, how will I then go as a Naaman on the land and tell the, the, the king you are naked? How will I go then and tell the king, you know, this is corruption and you must stop? How will I then go and deliver a message and say judgment is coming to you and your household unless you pay attention to the poor? You cannot and you will not. You have been compromised by the enemy. The Lord is saying, repent as you receive this message. Other is judgment is coming to this church. And it's going to be extremely embarrassing. I tell you, it's heavy times that we are living in. Crazy things that are happening. Shocking things that are happening. And unfortunately, as the church, we have become so gullible. We don't pray for ourselves in private. So when we go to church, you cannot tell when the apostle has missed it. You cannot tell when the bishop has missed it. You cannot tell when the prophet has missed it. I'm told in particular this church that received a, hundred, a few hundred, a hundred million, that's a figure that I was told, that after they had eaten, by the way, eating represents a covenant. After they had eaten, a prophet amongst them vomited and vomited and vomited. Still, nobody thought that that was a warning. Beloved, God is extremely merciful. God is always looking for an opportunity to have mercy. God is always looking for someone who will give him a reason not to bring judgment. And yet the tenets of God are true. We also need to know that we have someone called the accuser of the brethren who is Lucifer who is always going to the presence of God with accusation. And he will use the word of God and say, you said, and say they did. And that includes when we ourselves gossip amongst ourselves about one another. Let us repent. The Lord is merciful. He will wipe our sin away as a priesthood and he will restore. But the nation of Kenya, the children of God are hungry for the word of God. And so for the priests who have allowed themselves to be defiled, for the priests that think that God, God has become blind, for the priests that think that they can fool the people of God and steal bread from the house of God, bread being the word of God, that means stopping the word of God from reaching the children of God. For the ones who are making people stay at home, because they are so hurt, because of what they've seen, because of what they've been told, because of the injuries, God is not allowing it anymore. Maranatha, Jesus is returning soon, and the bride has to be ready. 
We have to be ready and God's going to do it with or without you. If you do not repent, judgment is coming to the house of the Lord. We have allowed the love of money. We have allowed projects. We have allowed the need to have a big church. We have allowed the need to be known and for our names to be stated. And we think that our reward, if I sit next to the president and I'm seen in the news, that is a reward or a crown. God have mercy on us as his priesthood. But God have mercy also on the children of God who are not arising against these things, but continue to pump up the men and women who have left the faith, calling them names like mightiest and I don't know, mama and papa, and I don't know what it is that you're upholding. We simply called our priests the priests that they were when I was growing up in the faith. I will call even my friends who are bishops, I'll call you bishop, I'll not call you by your name. Because I honor the office that the Lord has given me. But for sure, the only time I'm going to be calling somebody a name like Mama is when God has told me she's like a mom. For real, it's not something I'm going to pick up. And so far, the Lord has only allowed me to call one woman Mama. Her name was Esther Carrier. She went to be with the Lord. And the Lord allowed me, he told me, just call her mom and she needed a daughter at the time and I believe that's why God let me call her mom so it was with a purpose the Lord is also asking the children of God to go back to the first love to remember what Christianity is and unfortunately for some of us we don't even know because we've never been taught what Christianity is have you bought your father or your mother a handkerchief this year I did ask about a dress I asked a handkerchief why did I ask a handkerchief? A handkerchief is the cheapest thing that you can get for your parent. Have you bought your parent anything at all this year? We are in July. How have you honored your parent in terms of a gift? The Lord is asking us to take care of the elderly. How are we taking care of the elderly? How are we taking care of the poor, the widows, and the orphans? How are we loving one another? And why are we hating one another? Last night I received a message, and a number of you have been very concerned, and you've sent me messages of encouragement, thinking that I'm feeling sad. Can I tell you something? Either there are no hate messages on my page, or the Lord has closed my eyes because I do not see them. But I did receive one message yesterday in the inbox with a lot of insults from a man who figured I'm not a Lou and I must be having something against Lou. And as I looked at that message, I asked the Lord, Father, what am I dealing with and how do you want me to respond and minister to this person? Because that's how God has taught me to respond to any message of hate. What is it, Lord God? What is the opportunity for love and for ministry? God has taught me through time. And as I looked at the message, the Lord told me, look at the name. And as I looked at the name, the Lord told me, this is your relative. And I said, no, I don't know any such name. And I turned to my husband and I asked, do you know somebody with these names? Then we opened the, pay, the, the photo. No, first we didn't open the photo. I just gave my husband the name and he said, no, I don't. But the Lord had told me this is a relative. So I replied and I said, I love you. I believe you're actually my relative. And I believe this is the family line that we're related to. And I said, I'm just a priest. I have nothing against you. And I love you. I'm sorry you're hurting. I'm sorry you're feeling bad. The person replied with a lot of hatred. And finally, and by the way, in every message, they kept saying, stop it. Stop preaching it. Stop it. And you know, I've come to learn that the enemy is the only one who can be trying to muzzle a prophet. And normally, that's a spirit of Jezebel. It's one that kills prophets and silences the prophet. So finally, the Lord told me to reply with Daniel 3.18. So I replied with Daniel 3.18. And well, someone's checking if I'm okay because my car is parked. What manner of love. Daniel 3.18. And Daniel 3.18 says, Nebuchadnezzar have no reason or king to answer you on this matter. But even if we will not bow. And that's what Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said to Nebuchadnezzar when he told them he would throw them into the fiery furnace because they would not bow. 
because these messages were intended to make me bow before an idol cow. And even though I'd reached out and said we are related, the person kept going and going and going. Eventually, I had to block them and pray for them still. Then the Lord, again, I turned back to my husband. I said, this person must be a relative. My husband said, open the picture. We went to the profile. And you know what, beloved? The saddest thing? The gentleman is a relative. He doesn't know me. I don't know him, but the Lord revealed this is a relative. And I think the Lord allowed it so that I would know and be able to mention just how bad this hatred is. When brother turns against brother and sister turns against sister, the Lord told me exactly which relative to call and I called and the relative was very shocked because she said that this person is extremely quiet and is not even in the country. And um, it's just that the relative knows me well enough to know that I can't lie. Finally, when she spoke to the person, the person was extremely apologetic. But then, what if I wasn't a relative? How many marriages are breaking because of tribal, tribal division? How many homes are being shattered because of tribal division? Beloved, we are dealing with a Goliath. Tribalism is a Goliath. And what Goliath did to scare the children of Israel and the army of God, not just the children of Israel, the army of God. This was the army of God. And Goliath was heading the Philistine army. First of all, the physical, his size. Tribalism looks too big like nothing can happen. But what is bigger than the name of our God? But the only way we are going to fight it is if we are bowed before God and he guides us on exactly what truths we are dealing with and the Lord will slay this Goliath. But what then did Goliath do for 40 days? In the morning and in the night, Goliath shouted. In the morning and in the night, Goliath shouted and mocked and laughed for 40 days morning you wake up in the morning and all you're hearing is the shouting and the bellowing of this giant mocking and laughing and saying who's gonna fight me i'll give you to the bath and all kinds of things then in the evening again this giant is shouting so before you go to bed this is what you're hearing what you expose yourself will determine whether you fight the enemy or not if you exalt the enemy then you will have succeeded in listening to the shouts of Goliath in the morning when you wake up first thing. And that sets the pace for the day. And in the evening when you go to bed before you sleep, you hear. If you read that scripture, I think it's First Samuel 16, chapter 16, around there, you will find that Goliath also was dressed a certain way. But Goliath was huge and there's a way he looked. And if you notice, the children of Israel, instead of discussing their God or worshipping him and lifting him up, all they talked about is, have you seen him? Have you seen him? And what helped David was also being set apart. And David kept wondering, what is this thing? Because remember, as they were out there, him he was tending, the two sheep and the two goats, the two few ones, eh? because he was a baby. He was taken to be a little weakling. But uh, David spent time with God. David had learned to exalt God. He had learned to magnify God because he is, was a worshiper. And worshippers lift up the name of God. And he comes back and asks, is there not a cause? In that, by that time, by the way, some people are trying to motivate people by saying, you know, have you seen this guy? If you kill him, the king will give you the daughter. I don't know, you'll be given the kingdom and you'll stop paying taxes. They also had issues with taxes. Read the scripture. And look at how the enemy operated in the form of Goliath. The same demons that were there then are the same demons today. The same devil that was there then is the same devil here today. And we must stop looking at issues in the nation from a physical eye. And as the church begin to see the demon that is so scared and hiding behind a Goliath looking figure in the name of tribalism in the name of corruption and such things. So you must learn to arise and fight. And how do you fight in this season? A, be set apart. B, return to your first love. C, lift up the name of Jesus. 
and D, fight in the spiritual realm. Fight with love. Fight with love, the love of Jesus Christ. Fight with refusal to agree with the things the enemy says, because when you keep still, you agree. Arise in the name of God and honor the Lord. Let us lift up the name of Jesus and let us praise him and worship him. Let us focus on exalting God and saying, how may we serve you in our nation? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. I'll not be able to minister at lunchtime, so I needed to do a morning video because I need to go and be there for a friend in need. The Lord has taught me that if somebody needs me, then preaching can wait. Because human beings are eternity. Each person is a soul. Let me finish before I bless you. I, I finish with a blessing. Let me just say one more thing. We must learn to obey God. We must learn to obey God when we are the only voice in the midst of things. Samuel stood in a time when prophecy was rare and he spoke. You must, we must learn to speak when no one agrees or believes it. Because what we do is that we honor God who has sent us and God who we represent. It's not about being liked. It's about the kingdom of God, our Father's kingdom, and what he wants us to do. And obedience is better than sacrifice. I'm reminded in terms of obedience of something that I learned about in church from one of our congregation members on Sunday. About a pastor who was given a word by God. He was given a word by God and the Lord told him, go to a certain petrol station, drive there, park your car and do a headstand. Even when I heard that, I'm like, I'm sorry. He says, yes, true story. So this guy was told by God, drive to a petrol station, park and do a headstand. The guy struggled with it, but he learned to obey God as a priest. And may the Lord raise up more priests that obey God as well as children of God. But if the priests would obey God, we will teach the children of God how to obey God. So this guy went, drove past the uh, petrol station. He heard the Holy Spirit saying, turn around, park at that petrol station and stand on your head. He went, he parked. This is a man of the cloth, a man with a church. I didn't ask which church, maybe I should have but a respected man in the society. But he was asked to do this thing by God. Can you imagine how you would look? He went, he parked, and then he mm. stood on his head. He did a headstand. Mm. When he did a headstand, but then the place was very busy with many people and people were gathering to look at him. I tell you, sometimes you have to be God's monkey if that's what people will consider you to be. I'd rather be a fool for God. So when the man did the headstand, this young man came crying and held him and said, please stand. And the guy looked at him and sat down and they sat on the, on the ground together. And people were now gathering, looking at them and wondering what's with them. And they looked at them and then the man said, the man who had come and told him to stop, he told him, Truly, there is a God in heaven. This is not a makeup story, it's a true case story. Truly, there is a God in heaven. And he was crying. And the man of God was looking and saying, Man, what's the story? Because he still could not understand. He just done the most foolish thing ever. But clearly, somebody understood. This young man told him, this, Today, I was at my ends. I was going to kill myself. And I had said a prayer to God that I knew that there is no way he was going to answer so that I had the perfect excuse to prove there is no God and kill myself. I told him if you exist and if I mean anything to you, I'm going to go to this petrol station and I will find a man standing on his head. He, this pastor had the privilege of leading this dear soul to Christ. We serve a God who leaves the 99 and goes for one soul. We must remember that is who our God is. We must remember that is who Jehovah is. He is the only God who reaches out to human beings instead of the, uh, the other way that other gods are. The other gods, it's human beings reaching out to their gods. But our God leaves everything and comes for the one. If you are the only one that he needed to die for on the cross, 
he would still have sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for you. May we learn to obey and stop looking to be liked and stop looking to be loved. And for God's sake, stop trying to prove you're not a tribalist by declaring how you will not vote for so and so and maligning them and pulling them down and trying to be a hero and yet you're a child of God. Have you asked God who you should vote for before you try to exalt yourself as though you're better and above all? May the Lord bless you and please forgive me if I have stepped on your toes. It's never my intention to offend anybody. I speak as directed by the Spirit of God and I know that this word will bring life and will bring change into our nation and to many other nations. Please share the video and help us to get the word out that the Lord may be exalted and that our nation may be healed and that people may come face to face to this wonderful God who loves us so much and has great plans for us. I love you. God bless you. Have a powerful day. Please walk in the light and stand up for Jesus, not to defend him, but to uphold his tenets. Amen. God bless Kenya. And all the people of Kenya. God bless Kenya and all the people of Kenya. And may God bless the nations of the earth. Amen. May the Lord keep the church. In Jesus' name.